Welcome back for the final uh, module in the excavation support system design. Um, we just wrapped up finding the point of maximum moment. Uh, so let's take a look at this diagram here. Um, what we found was that the pressure, uh, the active pressure on the retained side of the excavation, uh, that is all of the soil down to point Y, okay, uh, was uh, equal to the the, the passive pressure, the resultant of the passive minus the active pressure in that zone you see labeled X. That would be below Y all the way down to point X. Um, what we ended up solving for was to find that the area PA1H, uh, this, this first triangle, plus the second triangle there uh, down below, which was P, is PA1 to Y, uh, is equal to um, this triangle that is uh, with, the, with the height of x there below y. Uh, what, we, what we ended up finding there was that is the area where we have zero stress. It also corresponds to the area where we know we have our maximum moment. So our last step in this problem, in the whole process, is to compute the maximum moment, what that moment is, and then compare that to the capacity of the pile that we're given in our problem. So let's go back to our, our problem here and uh, go back to our original problem statement. And you can see here on the left-hand side, uh, we have these sheet pile properties of bending strength and a section modulus. And we need to use that information to compare to see whether or not our pile will be able to withstand the maximum moment or not. So if we go to where we left off in our analysis in the last video, we computed what x was. And so x is 3.9 feet. We also computed y, which is 1.30 feet. Okay? If we go back to our drawing that we were just working with, we can see that the maximum moment is going to occur below h, uh, below y, and at this point down at the base of x, which is close to but not the point of rotation. Okay, so we know all those dimensions now. Now what we need to do is sum the moments about point X on the pile. So let's do that. Um, oh, we'll maximize that again. My apologies. So our goal here, we found our distance X, is to find MX. That's the moment at X. Okay? We'll do that in general terms here in this PowerPoint, and then we'll do it in specific terms in our problem. So we know, based on our previous analysis, we need to find the area of this triangle and then find its distance away from point X. If we do that here, we know that our, our triangles, uh, our, the area of our triangle, the total, the total force per linear foot of pile, is going to be H times the base PA divided by 2. That's the area of that triangle. And then the resultant force is at one-third the base of that, one-third of the height of the triangle from the base. Uh, and then we add that to the, de the depth y and the depth x to find its total moment arm there uh, using the bottom there of point x as the reference point. That takes care of that triangle. Fortunately, now we know y, so we don't need to mess around with that trapezoidal shape anymore. Uh, we actually know the base and the height of that triangle, which is PA, uh, PA1 and y. So it's going to be PA1 PA times y over 2. And then the uh, base of that triangle is actually going to be two-thirds because it's only one-third down from the, the base PA, uh, plus two-thirds of Y plus our height there, X. Uh, and then finally, we have our third triangle here. And this is the triangle there made at the base uh, where X uh, is. And we know, that the, uh, we know that the base of that triangle is the pressure at x, whatever that might be, we can compute that quite easily, uh, times one-third the height x. So when we're finding the pressure there at x, um, what we really need to do is to consider uh, the balance between the active and the passive pressure, right? So uh, go, let's go back here to our diagram. And we know we need to compute that pressure x, okay? That base of that triangle. So we know, let's draw that, uh, that sh the shape of that triangle is going to look a little something like this, okay? Where we have, let's pull that up here, make sure we're drawing it the right way. Uh, we can draw that triangle. Let's go back to one note if it will play here. There we go. Um, 
let's erase that. So what we know is that we have to compute the base of the triangle. We know the height of that triangle, x, but we know, we know uh, that that height, we need to find this base of that triangle there. So we know that this area, this is the zone above the point of rotation, we know that the pressure at any given point is going to be equal to sigma times whatever the depth is, and we're using x as our, as our reference point because it, we have just crossed that plane, okay? So we're at zero, essentially, at that plane. So we're going to have sigma times x, okay? Let me actually erase that because I think this will be a little bit simpler. Uh, remember the slope, we can even think of this as the slope of the line. We've got gamma not sigma, my apologies, gamma times x times kp, okay, minus gamma times x times ka, all right? Now, we know that, um, we know that that's going to be the pressure at that point, and we need, we know we need to, to uh, we can simplify that pretty easily by just saying we have x times Gamma, we could actually do this. <laughs> X gamma times kp minus ka. Sometimes I even stumble my, over my own words. All right. If we know that that is the base of the triangle, then the moment at that point, okay, is going, or the let's say the force at that point. Put a double line there so that you know that's not a division. We know that the force at that point is going to be our x times gamma kp minus ka, the base of the triangle here, okay, times our value x, that's the height here, over 2. All right, that's going to be the force. And then the distance there, and so let's use our typical force brackets, and then the distance there is going to be equal to x over 3, just as we saw. So let's go back to our PowerPoint, and you're going to see that actually laid out for you here. Um, we needed to find the pressure at x, which we just did. We need to subtract that off there, okay? And uh, we're going to multiply that by x over 3. And I hope I wrote x over 3 there instead of x over 2. Sometimes I make, yep, x over 3. Sometimes I make that little mistake and have to catch it. Okay, so what that leaves us with is finding that maximum moment. And that is, uh, at this point here, we are going to sum these all up. And let's actually do that one together here on uh, the OneNote, because I think we have enough time for it. Um, so we now know the last term there. This is the base. This is the force at x. This is the base here. Okay, and then this is, the, uh, this is our height divided by 2, and then this is going to be our force. So why don't we write this all out? We'll draw a big line here uh, because we don't need that above anymore. And we're going to say the sum of the moments at x is going to be equal to, and our first term is PA1 times H over 2. Okay, that's our, that's our force component. And then we're going to multiply that by its distance there, which as we recall, this is the first uh, triangle, so we know it's one third of the height there because the base is at uh, PA1 plus that distance Y and plus the distance X. That's going to be our moment arm. We are going to add that to that second triangle down there. That's going to be PA1 times Y. That's our depth Y divided by 2. That's going to be our the area of our triangle or our force. Okay, And the moment arm there is going to be 2 thirds of Y because our base is at the top there that PA base looks something like this. So we know that resultant force is only going to be is going to be two thirds of the distance away, one third here, two thirds there. And we're going to have to add on X to that because X is our reference point. Scroll down a little bit, make sure we have enough room. All right, and we're going to add on uh, our last, or we're actually going to subtract our last term because that is on the opposite side, opposite direction. Um, let's draw that out. So we're going to have uh, gamma x times kp minus ka, okay, Ta and that's going to be the base of that triangle. We're going to multiply that by x and then divide the whole thing by 2, and that is going to give us the area of that final triangle whose resultant is at x over 3 distance from x. All of this needs to be equal to, is actually, sorry, not equal to 0. 
we're going to find out what that's equal to. This is going to be equal to m max, not 0, of course. All right, let's plug in our numbers that we have here. Hopefully, we can do a little quick mental check and make sure that our numbers are correct. So I compute 416 as p sub a, 416 times our height of 10.5 divided by 2. And I'm going to multiply that by 10.5 over 3 plus our y, which is 1.3, plus our x, which is 3.91. Make sure that looks there. That's our first moment. Uh, that's our first moment. Our second moment is going to be 416 times uh, 1.3. Okay, that's going to be the, the y there divided by 2. And then our moment arm is going to be 2 thirds of y, which is 1.3, uh, plus our x, which is 3.91, running out of space there. Okay, and then our last moment that we're going to subtract is going to be. Uh, longer expression, which is 120, which is our, our gamma, uh, times 3 minus 0 0.33. That's kp minus ka. Um, let me just erase that there and draw our horribly drawn squiggly bracket. There we go. Uh, and then we're going to multiply that by our x, which is 3.91. And again, we're going to multiply that again by x over 2, because that's the, that's the height of our triangle. Uh, divided by 2 gives us our total area of the triangle. And finally, we're going to multiply by x one more time. x over 3, actually, that's our moment arm. And what I end up getting is 17,105 17, foot pounds. Now, that is, we are almost there. Our next step in this process is simply to compare the section modulus that we have to the section modulus that is required given the bending strength of that, uh, of the pile. So our section modulus that's required is simply the maximum moment over the bending strength. What this is telling us is the shape, the, the shape and the, uh, the volume of material required at a given material strength and an applied maximum moment, okay, the ratio of that, is going to give us the required section modulus, that amount of material and the volume of material in the shape that it's in. Okay, So we have our 17,105 uh, foot-pounds. All right, So that's foot-pounds. And we are going to multiply that, or in other words, divide it by 1 over 25,000 PSI. That comes from uh, this point right here. Okay, uh, and if we look at this, we've got pounds per square inch. Another way we could put this is we could say this is pounds and this is inches squared. Uh, we know that we need to make a um, an adjustment here because what we're looking for is inches cubed for s required. So we're just going to actually multiply this by 12 inches per foot, and what we end up getting is a required section modulus of 8.21 inches cubed. Now if we look at this, uh, we have an S required of 8.21 inches cubed. Uh, what we actually have for our S provided is 10.4 inches cubed. And if I look at that, S required is less than S provided meaning we have enough material okay, and in the appropriate shape. So therefore, we're OK. Our pile's good. So we can, we can drive it about 10 and a half feet down into the soil. The, the pile that we're given in the problem will be OK in bending and uh, in maximum moments. So we are actually A-OK -okay to use that pile driven as we've designed. So that's actually the end of the, the sheet pile problems. We'll actually do some on, uh, on soldier piles and lagging, which is the same up until we get to this maximum moment piece, and then we do a slightly different analysis to compare to see whether or not our, our soldier piles and lagging are adequate. But we'll try one of those too. 
So I hope you enjoyed the process. Hopefully these videos are helpful. They take a while to make, so, so hopefully everybody's making good use out of them. Um, and if you have any questions, either leave them as a comment or send me an email. All right? It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much.